A reason often given for belief in evolution is the apparent similarity between apes, especially chimpanzees, and humans. What do the latest scientific discoveries in genetics tell us about this supposed similarity? Do these findings support the theory of evolution or what the Bible teaches? Today on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. I'm Alexander Osborne. And I'm Thomas Bailey. In the 1970s, work began to compare the similarity between chimps and humans in an effort to support human evolution. But it isn't enough to compare the morphology, that is the form and appearance, legs, arms, face, and so on. A comparison really needs to be made at the level of the genes in the DNA. Based on early work comparing DNA, a, com a proponent of evolution, Richard Dawkins, claimed that chimps and humans are nearly identical at mm. the genetic level. In his book, The Blind Watchmaker, published in 1986, Dawkins claimed that humans share 99% of our genes with chimps. Dawkins' claim of near-identical genetic overlap between chimps and humans was later called the myth of the 1% by John Cohen, mm -hmm. an evolutionary biologist, in an article that appeared in the journal Science in 2007. Uh-oh. Why was it a myth? <laughs> there are quite a few reasons. Firstly, we'll need to realize that his claim wasn't based on a letter-by-letter -letter comparison of the two sets of genetic information. Mm -hmm. The technology to do that kind of comparison didn't exist until the 1990s. Right, and even today it's challenging to compare two long sequences of DNA. Nevertheless, a claimed overlap of 98.5% became the gold standard among evolutionary researchers and in the popular media. But we now know that the original work comparing chimp and human DNA had serious flaws. Laws. Yeah. Let's consider a few. Number one, the first comparisons between chimp and human genes used only small snippets of DNA where it was assumed that overlap would be found. Let's use an analogy to understand the issue. Pretend that you have two different thousand piece puzzles and you want to know how similar they are. If you match the blue pieces together, you will find almost exact matches in shape and color between some of the pieces from the two puzzles. But that isn't right. You have only compared a small portion of the pieces, so that's not a good indicator of how similar the puzzles are. And that is the problem. One study compared 97 protein coding sections of chimp DNA, but there are more than 234,000 protein coding wow. sections in human DNA. So that's the first issue. Number two is that researchers didn't consider major portions of the DNA, which they call junk DNA. Mm. So-called junk DNA is part of the DNA supposedly left over from long ages of evolutionary processes. But we now know that there is no such thing as junk DNA. So true. Recent studies have shown that the areas of DNA between genes guide numerous complex regulatory functions. For example, controlling the extraction of information from genes for the creation of proteins. Number three, it was discovered that the original samples of chimp DNA were contaminated with human DNA. Wow. <laughs> so there's evolutionary bias affecting how the experiments are set up, and now there's shoddy science. Right, yeah. Even a breath of a lab assistant can carry DNA and mix with the sample being analyzed. This is like someone mixing blue pieces from two separate puzzles and comparing them to a picture of one of the original puzzles. Today, proper DNA decoding requires that rigorous clean room procedures be followed. Hmm. But the problem is even worse. The fourth flaw in the research is an entire set of genetic information for chimps didn't yet exist. Oh, well. <laughs> so it was assumed that the uh, chimp DNA samples could be mapped to portions of the human genetic information. Right. Th think of the puzzles again. Let's say that one puzzle, once complete, will show children playing ball in the park under a blue sky with puffy clouds but you don't have the original box with the picture, so you don't know yet what the completed picture is supposed to look like. But since there are lots of blue pieces, you assume that they're for sky. Sure. So you take out a different puzzle box that has a picture of a blue sky with puffy clouds, but they're over a snow-capped mountain with forests. Hold on, we know that using the picture of the second puzzle as a guide is not going to help us assemble the first puzzle. 
Yep, but that's what the original researchers did. Oh, wow. They assumed <laughs> that chimp DNA would be like the human DNA when they made their comparisons. So the original study that claimed a 98.5% overlap between chimps and humans used a biased assumption. The researchers assumed that chimps and humans share a common set of DNA, and that assumption was based on the belief that chimps and humans evolved from a common ancestor. So that was quite a while ago. Let's look at how things stand today. A complete map of common human DNA only became available recently. The Human Genome Project was launched in 1998, but the goal of providing data on the complete genome wasn't achieved until May 2021. That's a long time. That is a long time. It took over 20 years of massive investment effort and the participation of many countries and labs to identify the core human DNA. And even now, the Human Genome Information Database is being refined, corrected, and updated. A fully complete map of chimp DNA doesn't exist yet, but a working version became available only in 2018. And as we'll see, recent scientific work indicates that humans are a completely different kind of creature from any ape. Right, there's no support in the DNA for the claim that chimps and humans evolved from a common ancestor. Right. Rather, an analysis of DNA supports what the Bible states. In Genesis 1, 24 to 25, God tells us that he created land animals, which included apes, by their kinds. And then God created human beings as an entirely separate creation, as we read in Genesis 1, 26 to 27. Paul confirms this difference when he states, For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. After the break, we'll let you know how researchers arrived at today's percentage match between chimps and humans. Helium gas is renowned for its ability to diffuse through materials quickly. Why is it then that we find an abundance of helium in certain rock crystals that it has not managed to escape from them? This has significant implications for the dating of rocks using radioactive decay. That's because helium is formed when some radioisotopes decay, and therefore lots of helium suggests lots of decay has occurred. Moreover, if lots of decay has occurred, it also suggests that the rock is very old. However, nuclear physicist Dr. Russell Humphreys realized that lots of helium trapped in the rock crystals that had not had time to diffuse out means that the rocks were actually young. Dr. Humphreys concluded that nuclear decay rates must have been dramatically faster in the recent past. And that is why rocks that are actually only thousands of years old are commonly wrongly dated using radioisotope decay as millions or billions of years old. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Earlier this century, published reports based on using advanced genetic decoding technology at the time suggested that the overlap between chimp and human DNA was around 98.5%. Yeah, that figure was wrong mostly because of the four issues surrounding the research that we just mentioned. We have better data today to use for a comparison. That's right. In the past 10 years, DNA sequencing has advanced significantly, enough to allow scientists to do a more detailed comparison of chimp and human DNA. Also, scientists have begun to create from scratch the sequence of chimp DNA. Focusing on their observations will hopefully get around their assumption that it will be similar to human DNA. And sure enough, the latest detailed decoding of chimp and human DNA shows that the supposed 98.5% overlap is way off. A report was published in 2018 by Richard Buggs, professor of evolutionary genomics at the University of London. He used the new chimp genome data for comparison to the human genome, and his report created significant discussion among geneticists because it stated, the percentage of nucleotides in the human genome that had one-to-one -one exact matches in the chimpanzee genome was 84.38%. Whoa, that's quite different from 98.5. Yeah. Now, some folks might not recognize the word nucleotides used in the sentence displayed. We'd better define that. A nucleotide is a basic building block of DNA. Okay. A nucleotide is composed of three molecules, a phosphate, a sugar, for example, ribose, and a variable nitrogen-based molecule. There are four different types of nucleotides. 
Think of nucleotides like alphabetic letters. The four nucleotides are combined in, to make words, words are combined into sentences, and chapters, which are genes, and other DNA used for regulating the operation of cells as they manufacture new proteins and other molecules. The human genome has about three billion nucleotides. Wow. About the 2018 uh, report you mentioned, published by the evolutionist Richard Bugs, it's significant that an independent comparison of chimp to human DNA was done recently by Jeffrey Tompkins. He earned a PhD in genetics from Clemson University in 1996 and worked in the Department of Genetics and Biochemistry at Clemson. Tompkins used a different method than Bugs for comparing the two sets of DNA and reports that he aligned 18,000 random pieces of high-quality chimp DNA that were each on average 30,544 letters long onto the human genome and several different versions of the chimp genome. He states that the aligned segments of chimp DNA were on average only 84.4% identical to human DNA. Basically the same as bugs. Interesting. Two different approaches and similar results. Yes. It can't be a coincidence that bugs and Tompkins, independently, using different methods of analysis, both identified the degree of overlap to be around 84%. So the original overlap proclaimed by Dawkins of 98.5% is not close to reality. No. As our knowledge about human and chimp DNA has improved, the degree of possible genetic overlap has declined. This raises an issue for those who believe that chimps and humans evolved from a common right. ancestor who lived a few million years ago. Yep. That is, if there are three billion nucleotides in the human genome, then we can estimate that 450 million nucleotides would have been added or changed, for example, through mutations, if evolution occurred. Wow. That, but that's absurd. It's impossible that that many changes wouldn't have introduced serious genetic defects, which would have destroyed the evolving life forms. Correct. Even a single mutation in DNA can destroy the operation of molecular machinery or create deadly genetic diseases. And we'll talk more about mutation rates in a few minutes and the associated problems for evolution. Yeah, the more we learn about the complexity of DNA, the more we realize that random changes at the letter level are unlikely to produce positive changes in how cells operate. So for evolution to be considered even remotely possible, the gap in the genetic overlap between chimps and humans must be 1% or less. Mm -hmm. But as recent studies have shown, the gap is at least 10 times larger. Let's pause for a moment. Maybe you're wondering about that 84% overlap and thinking, why is it that high? God is an expert designer. He uses different molecular components in multiple life forms. Right, God uses good design features, modifying them slightly for use in different creatures. For example, the five digit or five finger design is common in many creatures, but modified. It points to a single common designer. If every animal was completely, totally different with no similarities, it would suggest multiple designers, wouldn't it? Sure, yeah. As we noted earlier, there are similarities in the morphology, that is the form, between chimps and humans. Both have two legs, two arms, mm -hmm. eyes, ears, teeth, and so on. So the underlying genes to produce similar morphologies will likely be similar. Yeah, another example, the protein molecule hemoglobin used to carry oxygen around our bodies is found in most animal forms and even in some plants. Thus, the genes that code for hemoglobin will be similar. So we shouldn't be surprised to find some overlap at the nucleotide level where a protein appears in more than one life form. Absolutely. God knew what he was doing when he designed the building blocks of life. However, the possible 84% overlap doesn't account for other significant differences between chimps and humans. These differences make it impossible that chimps and humans evolved from a common ancestor. Let's consider some of the most significant differences. Orphan genes, chromosome count differences, Y chromosome differences, gene function differences, epigenetic differences. In most higher level kinds of life, there are genes that may not be found in any other life form. These are referred to as orphan genes. These genes provide information for creating unique proteins that are needed by a particular group of organisms. Comparisons have been made between the genomes of chimps and humans. One 2011 study reported that there are 
584 genes found in humans that are not part of the genomes for any primate family, that is apes, including chimps. These genes are used to create specialized tissue found only in humans. For example, orphan genes code for proteins found in our brains, hearts, livers, lymph nodes, lungs, male testes. The existence of orphan genes is clear evidence that animals and humans didn't evolve from primitive kinds, but they were created fully formed during the creation week. When we return, we'll consider a few other serious issues with the evolutionary paradigm and the idea that chimps and humans evolved from a common ancestor. Evolutionists have long proposed that nearly all our DNA, 98%, is junk, that it has no function whatsoever. They claimed this because evolution needs lots of junk DNA for three reasons. Firstly, there are far too many mutations which would cause our extinction, but if nearly all of them occurred in junk DNA, then they are less of a problem. Secondly, if mutations, accidental changes, created us, then accidents cannot create DNA with 100% function. This would be unbelievable. Thirdly, if mutations created us, they must have occurred in lots of DNA that had no function to allow lots of experimentation without damaging the existing functions. However, modern science reveals that nearly all our DNA has a function, and this is a huge problem for evolution. Creationist scientists doubted the junk DNA idea all along, although because we live in a fallen world, they expected to find some damaged DNA that might appear to be junk, but not much. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Today's topic is an update on old information. Yeah, and the old information convinced people that evolution was true. Help us get this information out far and wide by giving the video a like, subscribing, and sharing the video on Twitter and Facebook. The more interaction the video gets by doing those things, the more the algorithms suggest it to others. And if more people see it, the more people will learn that humans and chimps actually did not evolve from a common ancestor, but were created by God. There's more great Bible upholding information coming, so let's get back to it. On this week's episode, we're considering a claim made by Richard Dawkins that chimps and humans are 99% identical at the genetic level. Since he made that claim, advances in decoding chimp and human genomes demonstrate that the genetic overlap is, at best, 84.4%, a figure confirmed by two independent studies. In addition, we considered a difference which undermines the claim that chimps and humans have a common ancestor, the existence of hundreds of genes which produce unique proteins in humans, such as ones found in our brains. Another challenge for the evolutionary claim of common descent is the fact that chimps and humans have a different number of chromosomes. Mm. A chromosome is a package of genes, like chapters in a book, where the book represents the information in the entire genome. In the human genome, there are 22 base chromosomes shared between males and females, which contain an average of about 1,000 of the 20,000 protein coding genes identified to date. In addition, there is a sex chromosome, which is different in males and females. Each base chromosome is paired with a copy from each parent. This pairing helps to eliminate defective genes if there has been a mutation in one of the pairs inherited from our parents. Also, males have two different sex chromosomes labeled X and Y. Females have two identical X chromosomes. So humans have a total of 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46. Classes of animals have different numbers of chromosomes and genes. For example, donkeys have 62 chromosomes and sheep have 54. Chimpanzees and gorillas have 48 chromosomes. Evolutionists have theories for how the 48 was reduced to 46 during mankind's supposed journey from an ape-like ancestor. One theory is called chromosome fusion. Yes, but there's no empirical evidence showing how this could have occurred without destroying an evolving creature. Slight problem. And chromosome fusion has never been found in normal healthy cells, but does appear in cancerous cells, mm. which generally leads to serious life-threatening conditions. The difference in the number of chromosomes between chimps and humans is a real challenge for evolutionists to explain. Another challenge is the difference between the male human and chimp Y chromosomes. Right. When scientists compared the Y chromosomes, they find significant differences. One paper published in 2010 in the science journal Nature was entitled Chimpanzee and Human Y Chromosomes Are Remarkably Divergent in Structure and Gene Content. The geneticist Tompkins commenting on this paper stated, 
It becomes painfully obvious that there is no evolutionary relationship between chimps and humans that could have possibly arisen over three to six million years of speculated naturalistic processes. If chimps and humans had evolved from a common ancestor, their Y chromosomes should be the most similar, since the genes in the Y chromosome are the most stable, having the least variation. Another challenge for evolution. That's not all. There are more challenges. There are differences between chimps and humans that we mentioned earlier, gene function and epigenetics. First, recent research shows that genes have complex interactions with other genes. These genes work together to produce the developing embryo. For example, a study in 2017 identified at least two genes that interact to produce different skin colors in humans. Second, cells receive epigenetic information, that is, information above the genes from outside the womb, that affects the development of the embryo. For example, cells in a developing human can receive information about atmospheric pressure and make adaptations such as in the lungs for living at high altitudes. Amazing. Really amazing. The capabilities encoded in DNA indicate that DNA comes from the mind of the creator of life. And we should declare with the psalmist, how great are your works, O Lord. Your thoughts are very deep. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's yet another problem we should address briefly. Genetic entropy. Right. Although genetic entropy doesn't deal with genetic differences between chimps and humans, it is important for any consideration of the idea that chimps and humans evolved from a common ancestor. After Adam sinned, death and decay entered the world. Since then, the human genome has been decaying. Mutations are being introduced into the genome with every generation at an estimated rate of two to three hundred per generation. Many of these mutations at the nucleotide level are minor, like spelling mistakes, right. and have no apparent effect on subsequent generations. That's because God designed DNA with error correction processes mm -hmm. that are applied during genome copying. Wow. But some of these mutations cause genetic diseases. Mm -hmm. There are over 6,000 known genetic diseases carried by humans which can be transmitted to children. Well-known serious ones include color blindness, cystic fibrosis, Down syndrome, muscular dystrophy, hemophilia, sickle cell anemia, and Tay-Sachs disease. Very sad conditions. Even lactose intolerance can be a result of a genetic defect, although it can also be environmentally induced. Dr. John Sanford, a retired professor of genetics at Cornell University, with over 80 scientific publications and 30 patents, has indicated that the human genome is decaying. Right. In about 300 generations from Adam, humans will not be able to produce viable offspring. That's serious. There have been about 200 generations since Adam. Because of genome decay, it wouldn't be possible for humans to have evolved from an ape-like creature over two million years. Mm -hmm. The human genome is deteriorating much too quickly. Over that immense time, thousands of generations would have passed, and so many deleterious mutations would have accumulated that humans and chimps wouldn't exist. Let's not forget that the most significant difference between chimps and humans isn't in their genetics, but that they were created as entirely separate creatures on the sixth day. And we'll be back with more after a short break. Did you know that the DNA code is itself governed by another code known as the epigenetic code? This physical and chemical code determines which genes are switched on. Changes in this code can greatly alter an organism without altering one letter of its DNA. For instance, scientists have managed to change the coat color in mice by feeding them a diet that switches off certain genes. Epigenetics poses new problems for evolution. For instance, a group of animals with a camouflaged coat color might be favored in a particular environment. But if this coat color is due to epigenetics and not the actual DNA code, then the non-camouflaged animals would be selected against in vain. When the epigenetic modification is reset by a diet change, natural selection is sent back to square one. The field of epigenetics therefore creates problems for evolution and strongly points to a master programmer who invented the DNA and epigenetic codes. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. On Creation Magazine Live this week, we've been considering the significant differences between chimps and humans. Even though their morphology appears similar, they are completely different classes of creation that God placed on the earth. We have considered recent scientific evidence derived from studies conducted on the genetic codes for chimps and humans. 
The evidence indicates that there is no way that modifications in the genetic information of a supposed common ancestor between chimps and humans could have produced the two forms of life that we see today, even if these changes were to occur over millions of years. So this recent scientific evidence destroys one of the supposed supporting pillars of evolution, which was popularized by the writings of Charles Darwin in the 19th century. Darwin made a bold challenge in his book on the origin of the species. If it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. But Darwin made this challenge in ignorance. Yeah, let's consider some of the things about the nature of living entities that Darwin knew nothing about. First, he didn't understand genetics. Mm -hmm. He published his book in 1859. Gregor Mendel was doing his genetic inheritance studies, breeding garden peas, from 1856 to 1863, and published his results in 1865. Yeah, but his work was largely ignored until about 1900. Too bad. Yeah. Second, Darwin had no clue about cell complexity. Along with most scientists of his day, he thought that a cell was simply an amorphous mass of protoplasm. Today, largely from recent research, we know that cells are highly complex factories mm -hmm. for producing the organic molecules that support living entities. Each cell is far more complex than any machine that humans have designed or constructed so far. Third, Darwin didn't know about DNA. Yeah. It wasn't until the 1950s, a uh, hundred years after Darwin published his book, that James Watson and Francis Crick used advanced X-ray technologies to decode the double helix structure of DNA and began to expose the amazing amount of genetic information stored in DNA. Right, so if Darwin had known what we know today about the genetic complexity which underlies living things, he couldn't have presented the challenge that any organ could have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications. Right. It's impossible that the complexity in the human body, with over 200 different types of cells and over 30,000 total genes, wow. could have arisen by slight modifications from primitive life forms. Yeah, chance mutations in DNA, which supposedly diversify and improve the fitness of living entities, simply don't occur. Rather, mutations cause the loss or destruction of genetic robustness. Many people today have been taught to believe that all the life forms we see today are the results of evolutionary processes that started with single-celled entity and over a billion years developed into complex multicellular life. That's biblical and scientific naivete. But they display the same naivete about the complexity of the building blocks of life that Darwin did. They simply don't understand how much information is stored in the human genome. The information in DNA is used to manufacture the proteins and other molecules used throughout our bodies. But DNA amazingly also includes instructions for creating different kinds of cells and building the molecular machines which operate inside of the cells and the instructions for operating the cellular machines. Without doubt, DNA declares made by God. What we've considered in this week's episode confirms what the psalmist declares. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Amen. Much of the latest scientific information presented in today's episode has been derived from Jeffrey Tompkins' book, Chimps and Humans, A Geneticist Discovers DNA Evidence That Challenges Evolution, published in 2022. If you want to explore the topics we've considered today in more detail, in particular how recent studies in genetics support what the Bible declares, you can access a large repository of articles and media posted on our website, creation.com. You can also purchase resources which relate to the topics we've considered today, including Dismantled, a scientific deconstruction of the theory of evolution by two scientists, Dr. Robert Carter and Dr. John Sanford, available as a DVD or via streaming. Genetic Entropy by the geneticist Dr. John Sanford. We mentioned this book earlier. The Mystery of Our Declining Genes is a video of a talk given by Dr. John Sanford dealing with genetic entropy. It is available as a DVD or via streaming. The Stairway to Life, An Origin of Life Reality Check by Change Laura Tan and Rob Stadler. Tan received a PhD in biochemistry from the University of Pennsylvania and did postdoctoral training in genetics at Harvard Medical School. Stadler received a PhD in medical engineering from the Harvard MIT Division of Health Sciences and Technology. A description of the book on our website creation.com states, 
From recently acquired insights into the complexity of the simplest organisms, Tan and Stadler specify requirements for spontaneous formation of life and evaluate the prospects for natural processes to satisfy these requirements. The Stairway to Life is a thought-provoking inquiry that breaches the final stronghold of spontaneous generation. As we have demonstrated today, the Bible-believing Christian, the person who not only believes God's Word, but uses it as a basis for their worldview, how they view the world around them, that will find that facts of science beautifully fit with Scripture and the Genesis creation account. That's one of the reasons I love being a Christian. With the Bible as the foundation of our thinking, observations from science make sense. For example, we read, And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Humans and apes have a common designer, not a common ancestor. We'd love to hear from you. If this show has helped you to understand more about how the facts of science support the Bible, drop us a note in the feedback section of our website. Again, that's creation.com. And remember, Christianity is an evidence-based faith. And science supports scripture. Wait, 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 don't go just yet. If you learned something from this episode, then others will too. Share this video as widely as you can. And if you haven't yet, click that like button. Leave a comment about what you found most interesting or respond to other comments. Those activities help push the video to other people's feeds. Thanks for watching.